from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello, dear listeners, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. I'm Peter Tisher. And I'm Roger Charlton. Hi, Roger. Hello, Peter. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Peter, I've been waiting to ask you, you know, last time we were talking about bread and so on from a British perspective, and I only went to the States briefly once, and I didn't really find out what the Americans think about bread and what's available, so maybe you can fill us in a little bit. Well, it's not really a very long story, oh, I, I have to say. Um, when an American says bread, he basically thinks of what Germans would call toast. Or, toast. Yeah, well, oh, toast you mean, bread, yeah. you know, it's this prepackaged sliced white bread without a crust. Yeah, so it's, um, you, you buy it in a supermarket and you can keep it for a few days. Um, rather long, yeah. yes, and it's, it's actually, Americans would feel that if you can squeeze it a lot and it's, it's, it gets all mushy, all soft yeah. and it too takes back its original shape, then it's fresh bread. Yeah. So it's the whole opposite of what a French or a German person would consider fresh bread. They hardly ever have any bread that has a crust on it. They, all, they don't have these small rolls either. And if they mm. have a small roll, then that would be soft as well, mm. like in a hamburger bun. Yeah. Well, we're, I mean, in Britain, we're very familiar with this kind of bread, which you... I would call it concertina bread, you know, you squeeze it and it comes back out again. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't make music. But. Yeah. And there are not very many variants either. I mean, no. you have white bread and then you would have rye bread. So, which has this little, which has rye in it, yeah. a kind of cereal. And those are the two kinds that Americans will eat. Right. But I, what about different ethnic groups? They've probably introduced some variation, haven't they? Well, of course, there are bagels. Oh, yeah. Well, that's uh, a Jewish thing. That's a Jewish thing. Those are these round, they look like donuts, basically. Yeah. But you can have them, eat them uh, in a savory variant. Yeah. Or um, that's, a, that's unleavened, is it? If it's Jewish, unleavened. Unleavened? That is, there's no yeast. Oh, I wouldn't know that. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do know is this is basically the alternative to a sandwich because you yeah. can sandwich things in between and eat them. This right. is just like a, almost a full meal or yes. an evening meal. Yeah. Um, it's not like it's just a little thing that you you eat on the side like a donut. No, but I suppose in the in the big American cities you can get the other stuff like uh, what's been introduced by the Indians, for example. You know, these um, very flat kinds of bread, these round flat breads and so on. Yeah, well, in, in the cities, of course, you will find bakeries all over the place. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you can get the German kind of bread as well there. Um, so, you know, all variants that you have. But mm. in, an, in a normal, standard American city, you don't buy bread in a bakery. Yeah. You can hardly find one. You will buy your bread in the supermarket, yeah. and you don't even have a corner with a bakery like we have. No, it's it's on the shelf, yeah, pre-packaged, and that's it. And you hardly even ever toast it. What they will have is is our other things. Um, the sweet stuff is is uh, there is more variation. Yeah. For example, you will have muffins. Yeah. You know those? Yeah. Those little cakes. Yeah. Or if it has icing, that'll be a cupcake. Yes. Um, I think a lot of people are familiar with those. They, they're an American export, really, aren't they? Right. And speaking of muffin, there's an interesting thing. You, as a British person, do you know what an English muffin is? Um, one I bought in England? No, definitely not. <laughs> it's something, I think, very American. Um, it's a... Well, it's it looks like a flattened roll... That is already pre-sliced in the middle. It's savory or saltier. And you put it in a toaster and you toast it. Yeah. And uh, then you usually put salted butter on that and eat that for breakfast. Uh -huh. So it has nothing to do with cupcakes or muffins that uh -huh. you put in these little forms. 
is round and you put it in a toaster, then that's what Americans uh, call an English muffin. Now, that was probably an English import to America then at some stage. I wouldn't know. No <laughs> idea. I love we, those. And we, you know, we like toasting things in Britain. It's maybe a, it's, maybe it's a that's cold, a cold, damp climate. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's where it got its name. So you think yeah. not of the product, but of the toaster. Yeah, because it's not just toast bread. It's also I mentioned last time crumpets, uh -huh. which have to be put in the toaster. Right. We have a variety of things which are eaten warm rather than cold. Right, but that's basically it yeah. for American bread. Not a lot of variety, so not a lot of <laughs> vocabulary to learn here. If it isn't for the ingredients, you may have, you know, whole wheat bread sometimes and that sort of thing, Or, but that's it. Yeah. Which reminds me, do you know the expression, the best thing since sliced bread? I definitely know that, and I can even tell you where it comes from, but yeah. I think this is for another podcast. Okay, let's, let's break off there for today. Okay. Bye, dear listeners. See you in two weeks. Bye from me, too. Listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.